Good afternoon subscribers. Long time since I have uploaded a video to the, the Geekonomics channel and today I'd like to talk through some of my thoughts about the pending GCSE Economics exam series. So I have a spreadsheet behind me on the board and I have colour coded it ladies and gentlemen. So the 2022 paper is in blue, the 2023 paper is in red, and then in yellow, we have what I think might be, and of course I have no inside knowledge on this, this is just maybe an educated guess, what might be the likely topic areas that could be assessed on this year's, both the micro paper, which you can see labeled here, and also the macro paper. So we're going to start on the, the micro economics revision tab. So I'll talk you through just briefly the 2022 paper, 2023, and then as I say, we'll get into um, some thoughts about what could potentially appear on the, the, the exam which is coming in the summer. So in 2022, on the microeconomics paper, three questions. And uh, obviously here, I would uh, say at the beginning, I'm not really going to talk about the content of the, the multiple choice questions. We're really just looking at the content of questions 21, 22 and 23, which are, of course, the, the extended answer style of questions. So in 2022, ladies and gentlemen, we had a question about demand and supply to start off. And it was a lovely question. It was about house building. And it's about a company which sort of specialised in building houses and particularly extend extensions onto houses. And the questions which then uh, followed that piece of stimulus material were focused on um, this idea of what is an auction. Um, it focused on what sector of the economy this particular organisation was operating in. It talked about the fact that um, what would happen when there was an increase in income, what, what might the likely uh, impact be on house builders, and there was a demand and supply style analysis diagram that followed from that. There was a question, very straightforward, a question to Marker about explain how you would raise productivity in an economy. Another question, which was again an analysed question, talking about the impact of competition. And of course, competition, implication, more suppliers. So demand supply diagram, shift supply to the left, the right, um, and, and carry on all of your analysis from there. And that was it really. So that was question one, lovely question, I think, to get started. Then question two, so 22, it would be, of course, in the paper, was a labor markets question. Focused, uh, the general context was an economics graduate was looking for a job. And the, the, the questions followed on from that case study. So aspects of the, the specification which were tested here focused on the mobility of labour. Remember that aspect of mobility, both occupational and geographical, it is mentioned in your textbook, but it is a very small section, two or three lines, yet um, there was quite a, a reasonable, certainly understanding of that was required for this particular paper. So oftentimes it's important not to miss out little bits and pieces of theory. Um, there was, a, as you would expect, given that it's about a graduate looking for a job, there was a wage rate determination diagram. There's a calculation question with regard to gross and net, net wages that um, you had to calculate. It's worth emphasizing, I think, that most of the calculate questions do come on the, the macro side of the course rather than the micro. Um, that's not to say you shouldn't be ready with your calculator, of course, during the exam. There was a, a question, a lovely little question, but a tricky question nonetheless about how total revenue rises if price elasticity is perfectly elastic. So straight line. And of course that then is all to do well with the fact that in order to increase your revenue, you need to be increasing your demand. So it needs to be shifting rightwards all the time. Um, and then there was the evaluate question, to what extent do rising revenues lead to rising profits? Interesting question. Um, is it the case that just because your revenues are increasing, you thus make more profit? Of course it might be, but then, however, on the other hand, there are all sorts of reasons why that might not be the case. And then the final little uh, section on that, let me just move that down. So the final little section on that particular question 
Oh, well, that was it actually. So that was that takes us then to question three. And then question three was, oh no, it doesn't, sorry. Let's go back, let's rewind, apologies. So at the end of that financial markets question, there was an evaluation question about the usefulness of the financial sector to businesses. Um, caught a lot of people out, indeed my students have just been doing that over their Easter holiday and you know, asking what is the financial sector. So very important, you know the role of the bank, the building society, why businesses rely upon them and what you would do if you weren't able to access them. And then the final question, question 23 on the, the micro paper of 2022 was, the context was Tom's mobile baked potato business. Um, so this is, is on again, financial markets mostly. So question about what is money? What is that life insurance policy? So all these kind of fairly small little sections of the textbook that you needed to be aware of in that instance. What's the effect of market forces on the price? Of a good, particular good or service market forces, of course, being the term for demand and supply. Um, that caught a lot of candidates out because they simply didn't know what market forces actually meant. Calculating interest. So students had to calculate um, interest on, I think it was a loan repayment that they were asked to calculate interest. What is an overdraft? Again, fairly small part of the specification and the the evaluation question then focused on the importance of the financial sector to businesses. So all told and all together, that was the micro paper for 2022. So now we run on and we move into the micro paper for 2023. So that's the red section here. So again, just you three questions, of course. Um, interesting that the first question in 2022 was about construction, the housing market loosely. And again, the context for the first question in 2023 was also the housing market. Now, does that mean that there's going to be a recurring theme or does that mean, well, they're done with housing and they're going to move on to something else? Time will tell, of course. But the questions here were to do with defining demand interpreting data so i think you were given a, a data set about house prices and how they moved over a period of time had to interpret that data analyze the impact of increasing demand on the on the housing market generally um, but really helpful in that instance to, to be aware of and at least have some sort of working knowledge as to the fact that the pes the price elasticity of supply for housing was um obviously relatively in price inelastic in that regard. Question about resource allocation. Um, another explain question, question why builders are producers. So remember, your explain questions are two markers and you really do need to make sure that you give two separate points to get the two separate marks. And then as it says in your, in your specification, you need to be able to explain the, the sort of the, uh, the inter, the interrelated nature of producers, consumers, and government. But the final question was quite a tricky question where you had to evaluate the interdependence of producers, consumers, and government. Now that did cause quite some consternation, uh, particularly among your teachers, probably more so than uh, students who did this particular paper, just because the, the, that kind of requirement to evaluate those things um, is not really explicit within the paper, within the specification, should I say. Um, so just to just to be uh, aware that sometimes there are things that have appeared in the past which are not part of the the directive of the specification i suppose but that's a very rare occurrence and i'm sure it won't hopefully happen touch wood this year next question so the question 22 and this one was all about competition so within nina and leo's cafe was the context for it so it's a question about ped price elasticity of demand um, candidates were asked to explain, um, I think it was just to explain the terms equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity, Ex show the effect of increased competition again, so a repeat of a question which has appeared in the past, explain what's meant by opportunity cost, calculate some interest um, on a particular sum of money or revenue or something like that. And then there's a question on economic sustainability. 
So these notions and ideas and concepts of economic sustainability, social sustainability and environmental sustainability, very important. And you do need to make sure that you are, you know, you've got a good understanding, a good grasp of what those concepts mean in order that you are able to answer and evaluate question on those should they arise because we can see that in the past that has been the case and then question 23 was one about free markets so we talked again over here about market forces here so this was about free markets and prices now free markets of course where the price is simply being determined by the demand and supply um, there's no intervention from the government or anything like that and the context was a uh, local kind of small medium SME forum, small and medium sized enterprises forum. Uh, the questions were about the role of price, um, the response of markets to excess supply. If you've got excess supply, what happens? Well, you need to lower prices in order to clear the market. That idea of market clearing, again, very important for us to be able to use in the appropriate circumstance. Analyze question about fall in demand. So very straightforward, demand supply, shift demand to the left, explain what's going on. Asked to draw a supply curve from a set of data. Asked to talk about the costs of specialization, discuss the costs of specialization, and then consider the advantages of growth of, so you, you're given a hypothetical village, I think, can't remember what it was called, but then you were asked to just consider what would be the advantages of if all of the local firms started to experience economic growth, how would that benefit the local area? And of course, there are, there are, there are pros and cons to that, as you will well know. So having digested all of that, what might be likely in this year's uh, paper? So I've tried to have a look and just think about, well, things that are maybe recurring things, but also things which have not appeared in the past, which might therefore yeah, be more likely to appear on this exam session. So this is the, the yellow column I'm looking at. So I'm thinking about maybe markets, because there does seem to be a bit of a pattern here as to housing market, housing market. So I'm thinking maybe the context could be the energy market, gas and electric, something like that, just given what's been going on in the global economy and to your, your parents and your carers, electricity and gas bills, etc. So maybe that's something. Something maybe around scarcity and choice, that notion of um, finite resources and scarce resources, again, just given what's been going on in the global, the global context with regard to the availability of certain resources, be that semiconductors or oil or whatever it might be. Maybe something to do with sell, your, your facts of production, your capital, enterprise, land and labour. Um, the, the obvious kind of thing to link that would be, well, an analysed question to consider that what would happen if there was a reduction in supply. We, we've had context here where it's um, changing demands, not so much on the supply side, so maybe something on supply. Maybe something about the understanding and application of the price elasticity of demand as well. So of course, although energy bills and things like that have gone up in price, your parents probably have still continued to buy more or less the same quantity due to the nature of the, the you know the the price elasticity demand of the good, and then maybe something around the costs and benefits of specialization and exchange. I think we've learned, haven't we, as a nation, the importance of being very self sufficient in certain in certain aspects of the economy, be that energy or agriculture production or whatever it might be. And so maybe there might be something more specific as to the costs and benefits of specialization. Remember, it's important if you do get a question on that, they'll probably focus it on either the consumer, the producer or the government. So you need to make sure that you're zooming in on the correct, the correct economic agent when you're responding to that. So that's a few thoughts on maybe one question. A second question might be about competition. So again, context might be just thinking around what's been going on with kind of the supermarket industry and what's been going on with Tesco and we had the field merger obviously of Asda, the Sazda, Sainsbury's Asda coming together, blocks by the Competition and Markets Authority and we've had all dies and Lydells really making good headway in the supermarket industry but of course in recent days, just last week or the week before Easter holiday, so April 2024, 
we saw that Tesco's made record profits, haven't we? Two point, can't remember the exact figure, two point something billion. So all in all, and just again, looking at what's gone before, there hasn't really been a lot on these market structures of oligopoly and monopoly and price competition, all of that sort of thing maybe is something that is ripe for some questions this year. And then again, if you consult your specification, you'd be looking at an evaluate question talking about the impact of competition on the producer or the impact of competition on consumers. So maybe that's something to consider. And then finally, and I say finally, simply because I'm limiting this to three things, but you know, this is just, as I say, I'm just, I'm just sort of, this is best guess. The labor market. So the context could be a shortage of workers in certain sectors. And of course, we have seen that again. Um, it, we, we've seen a rise in sort of, you know, we've had COVID, haven't we? We've had the fact that the economically inactive part of the, the labor force has increased. Um, so shortage of the labor market is tight. You may well be familiar with that phrase. Um, so there's not a lot of slack there in terms of people who are searching for jobs and in between jobs and looking for jobs. So maybe a shortage of workers in certain sectors. Again, what might the impact of that be on their wages? Um, so you'd be, again, as you know, you're thinking about supply side shifting left and uh, wage, wage costs rising for firms as a consequence. And then maybe something following on from that, a bigger evaluate or analyze question with regard to the costs of production. Obviously wage costs, particularly for a school, for example, are a huge, a huge proportion of wage costs. Of, sorry, of overall costs. Your wage costs are a huge proportion of your overall costs. So what might the impact of that be on profit and your bottom line in, in that respect? So those are just a few thoughts on the micro side of the paper. Um, I'll put a link to this particular spreadsheet uh, in, the, in the notes below and you can have a, a read of that at your leisure. Uh, if you've got any questions you'd like to fire my way, then, then please do. Um, I, I would really, you know, I would encourage you to have a look at the Tutor to You Revision Economics playlist, which has been, the, the sort of the live sessions have been ongoing during the, the Easter holiday, that although they are for A-level, there's a lot that you um, would understand there, and I would really encourage you to, to go, to, to subscribe, obviously, to the Tutor to You, and also to to um, just watch those videos and to glean what you can from it. Some of it will not be relevant to yourselves, but you'll you'll know that just from kind of the content of it. Okay, so that's it. Uh, bye for now.